Hi, this is Andy Crestadina from Orbit Media Studios. Google Analytics 4 really wants you to customize things. There aren't that many reports. Uh, the best way to get insights is to take a report and then adapt it for your needs. And even more powerful than that is to get out of the report section and go straight into the explorations and build something that will give you fantastic insights uh, without much work. I'm going to walk through now for a couple different use cases for using GA4 explorations to find quick and impactful insights. Let's jump in. Okay, I'm looking at an account right now. Uh, this is an account that happens to be an e-commerce site that, that is uh, getting traffic from paid. And I'm gonna check to see if there's a difference between conversion rates for desktop and mobile users from paid. Now, as I do this, you could use this for any traffic source. You could optimize any type of campaign for any type of conversion type. So lead generation or anything at all. Uh, this happens to be an interesting one because it's paid traffic for a paid um, conversion. Uh, here we go. Okay, I'm in uh, the report section. I'm going to go first to explorations. I'm going to build a blank exploration here. Uh, I like to start from scratch. This is my favorite way to do it. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to add uh, two quick dimensions. One of these is going to be uh, source medium. Now, as you do this, we're not looking for the attribution source medium. We're looking for session source medium. Uh, there's a difference. So uh, that, that's kind of important. I'm also going to find the category, device category, which is right here. Click import, got my device, my dimensions. Now for the metrics, I'm just gonna choose some simple stuff. We're just gonna use top line sessions, great. I'll do session conversion rate, also fun. And because this one happens to be uh, for a paid opportunity, a paid conversion type, I'm gonna choose gross purchase revenue, import. Okay, we've got our dimensions and metrics selected from the variable column. Now we're gonna actually go build our little exploration. So for the rows, I'm just gonna choose the session source medium. And for the values, I'm gonna choose all three sessions, session conversion rate, and gross purchase revenue. Now, I wanna see just one type of traffic, so I'm gonna segment, I'm gonna uh, filter this to just show when the session source medium contains uh, CPC for paid, cost per click. And when I apply that, this is gonna show me just that. Uh, I need a little more data. This is an interesting analysis, but I'm gonna go back farther to get a little more uh, data in my report. Of course, longer date range means more data. And here we are, and you can start to see, okay, there's the general conversion rate from paid, and most of these have no real traffic, no problem. But what's the difference between mobile and desktop? Now I can do something that was never possible in universal analytics and can't be done in the regular GA4 reports. I'm gonna add a column for device category. Okay, if this isn't dramatic enough for you, we can change our cell type to be a heat map. And you can quickly see, wow, we're driving about the same amount of traffic from desktop and mobile, but the desktop traffic is 7.4% conversion rate versus 0.45. That's like a 15X or 17X difference, big, big difference. So this suggests a very inefficient ad spend. Uh, if we were to simply go in and turn off uh, mobile ads, uh, we would get roughly the same amount of revenue and conversions uh, with uh, a fraction of the ad spend. This is a quick example of a way in which you can just build explorations to show the difference in performance across uh, not just traffic sources, but device type. And when that's paid, it's especially valuable because you can then go make your, uh, you know, adjust your budgets or turn off ad groups or suppress all ads for a certain device type. Okay, next up, I'm going to measure the click-through rates on a call to action. Marketers should know the click-through rate on the call to action. It has a huge correlation with results. All things being equal, a higher click-through rate on a call to action will create more demand. So. For this, we're gonna use an exploration, specifically a path exploration. So I'm gonna come back in here to the explorations. I'm gonna choose path exploration. And then uh, this is sort of useless in my view. I, I think that uh, this, these aren't the, this is not a great starting point, so I'm gonna click start over. And I'm simply gonna pick the home page in this example as uh, my, my starting node. Here's a home page of this website. It's got a contact button. What percentage of visitors who come to this home page click on that? Uh, or click on anything. So I'm gonna click here, go to page path, and then choose the home page specifically. That's it. Now I'm on the home page. Uh, I'm going to go back to a larger, uh, a different date range. Uh, let's do say something in here down to uh, something in here. Uh, I'm also gonna create a filter for desktop because almost all of our uh, conversions are on desktop. So a device category exactly matches desktop, click apply. And this is it. This is gonna show me here the, uh, the rate at which people take every action on this, on this uh, page. 
So we have uh, the total number of visitors to the home page. Uh, I could filter deeper down to find a certain traffic source. And here's the contact rate. So that's like a, I think about a 9%. Uh, no, that's about a 7% click-through rate on the contact button. Uh, you got to kind of get on a calculator and do this weirdly like this. Uh, there's no, no percentages shown in the path explorations. Uh, and then from there, if I want to see the conversion rate, the actual conversion rate from visitors who go to the contact page. So 7% of people go to the home page, click on the contact link, and about 9% of those uh, make it finally all the way to the thank you page. Uh, very, very useful for measuring the performance of landing pages, for example, uh, a registration page, like are there drop-offs. Uh, so it's very quick, easy thing to do, create a path exploration. And you can see the performance of your entire navigation. Like uh, are there little things that get clicked a whole bunch or are there big things that always get missed? Uh, how does the visual hierarchy align with how visitors are actually uh, in interacting with the website? So very, very useful and uh, a fast way to just confirm and then go test hypotheses about how to get a better click-through rate on each of your calls to action. Marketers spend a lot of time creating content and a lot of time promoting content, but often very little time measuring performance. So I'm going to use an exploration now to measure the performance of a single piece of content across channels. Quite simple, looks like this. I'm inside GA4, I'm going to go to Explore, I'm going to click to create a new blank exploration. Now. For this one, I'm going to actually make it a line chart, and for the dimension, I'm just going to choose the page path because that's kind of the code word in GA4 for uh, the URL, and I'm going to come in here and just choose sessions for, for high-level traffic. Uh, we'll do this in two different ways, but I'm just going to start here. And then I've got a page. Here's the page. It's been around for a little while. Uh, I can. It's definitely uh, a good time to measure uh, performance across channels. Uh, I'm just going to measure top line performance first. So here I'm just going to create a page path uh, filter so that um, I'm going to find the page that has that exact URL. There it is. Click apply. Okay. And the only value I'm going to add to this, this uh, line chart is sessions. Now the date range that I'm looking for here is going to be, let's do, uh, I'll go back to around the time when that went live. I think it's an update to an article. It's been live since February. Uh, come down here and click apply and we'll see. I'm going to switch granularity from day to week because that's going to give me a little bit more meaningful. Look, I didn't even add a breakdown and it's already interesting because it kind of compares that to the so-called expected value. So you can see it's a little bit above the benchmark in certain ways and kind of falls in that range. Looks like it's generally kind of doing okay. Now I want to see the performance across channels. So I'm going to add another dimension to this and I'm going to see its performance for uh, session source medium. So these are the more, uh, both the, the broad origin of traffic, medium, and the specific origin of traffic, source. So uh, when I choose to add that, I need to make sure it's session source medium because just source medium is an attribution thing. It probably won't have much data. Then I'm going to add that to the breakdown. And it's going to give me some colored lines, albeit very close in color. <laughs> like usually it's like blue and light blue. And here I can see. Uh, pretty interesting already. It's detected some anomalies, that's fine. But, it, but I can see the performance in email. I can see the performance in, in um, kind of the uh, social media and referral traffic and sort of partner sources of traffic. And when I come out here, I can start to see whether or not it got performance in SEO or from search. And so that's the, the you know, if there's no long tail here, then there's no search performance. That's interesting. That's useful. Uh, I'm going to call this exploration article performance by channel. And I'm gonna, instead of making a new exploration, I'm going to get some more insights into this one by adding just a new tab. Let's come in here and make a new tab. It's got still my same uh, variable set up here, but I'm going to add a few more. I'm interested to see how the engagement rate varies across channels because uh, that's sometimes really interesting. Um, and so this is, uh, of course, just a table exploration. And for my rows, I want this to be uh, the Oh, not segment. For my rows, I want this to be session source medium. And again, for my filter, I'm going to filter to show just that URL. When the URL uh, path, when the page path uh, exactly matches, when I copy and paste it in here, I see it there at the top. Click apply. Cool. Okay. And then for the values, we're going to take both uh, sessions and engagement rate. <clears throat> so now I can see the performance across different channels just to that URL in its ability to attract visitors and its ability to get visitors to take action. I think the heat map looks a little nicer. And then uh, similar to what we did a minute ago, I'm gonna add, uh, I've got plenty of room here, this is a very simple report. Um, I'm gonna add something to this exploration. I wanna put in some device category 
Uh, no, sorry, device category is a dimension. So I'll come up in here, device category. And uh, when I add that as a column right here, drag that as a, click for that as a column, uh, I can see its relative performance across different promotion channels and different device types. Uh, so you can see this thing, uh, not a lot of email traction. Um, the general engagement rate is higher on desktop than mobile, uh, except for search. Search, and from uh, Twitter, it actually was more engaging for those visitors. If you see something again, you see something in here that isn't as practical, like not set, <laughs> kind of just visual and noise, uh, you can remove that just by clicking to, um, ex clicking and exclude. Uh, if you want to see a, you know, if you have a bunch of different uh, traffic sources, you can add, add, add to this. Uh, if you want to export this data and give it to AI to analyze, or uh, if you want to, um, I just took out tablet users. Uh, and then, you know, you can also name these, um, name these up here, whatever you want to call it, give that a name if you wanted to, and the, and the report itself. So I say, I call that article performance by channel. One last final tip, if I come in here to the explorations and I decided I wanted to share that, I can just come in here and click to share. Now, anybody who logs in, in any account, not just the one I'm logged into, uh, and looks at this GA4 property, they'll be able to see that. Now, it's gonna be read-only mode, so they're gonna have to uh, uh, duplicate it if they wanna do some analysis with it or mix it up in a different way. Things you can do in explorations that you cannot do in normal reports, like path exploration or by adding columns, you can get sort of like three or more dimensions onto the same report. Uh, and sometimes the insights are just much easier to find. So hope this is useful, kind of fun. Hope it's a starting point in that you can now get ideas for how to explore your own data uh, just using similar methods to this uh, or take some of these exact ones and just look for that specific uh, insight and then go take an action based on that. Uh, again, Andy from Orbit Media, I hope this was helpful. Uh, wherever you saw this, down below, you're gonna find the, the detailed article or a link to it that takes you to the step-by-step um, -step process. Uh, and of course, as always, subscribe if you want more of these or share it with a friend if you know someone else who's struggling to get value from uh, GA4 Explorations. See you next time.